Park here. This is the new Halloween event that they have going on here, which is really focused on all ages. Uh, it is not a scare event, although they have some kind of eerie things. We're going to take you to the four lands so you kind of get a feel for all of that. Yeah, definitely. It's been a lot of fun. We've been here several hours now, and it's been quite enjoyable. I've loved it. There's uh, live performances. There's trick-or-treating for the young ones. There's um, activities. There's crafts. There's Lots of music. Yeah, for live performances. It's been um, yeah, really impressive. It's been more than I was expecting. So Yeah, a lot of um, themed food. I don't know that we're going to really get to all that in this kind of mini tour that we're going to do here, but a lot of themed food as well. Uh, the price is included in a regular pass for the park or it is $41 yeah day ticket so I uh, said so they gave us access at 4 o'clock and there is well when we do our kind of bigger overview video you'll see some of the content from the daytime as well to fit all the shows and we had to start then but really incantations was the show that was just taking place and that kind of kicks off the night and says okay it's all about celebrating tricks and treats they talk about kind of the different types of uh, Halloween, you know, how you celebrate. And so what we'll do is we'll kind of take a quick tour of the lands here and we'll actually flip the camera around here as we start because as soon as you enter the turnstiles, you make the choice of whether you go to the left for the tricks, the more creepy, icky, if we want to say scary, although not a scare event side, or the treats. You can see Sweet Tooth Acres, Everfall, etc. So we've got the kind of two sides of Halloween and we're going to start making our way and we'll talk more about things as we go here. So we'll head off to the right. So as I said, the event uh, opened the gates at 4 o'clock. Uh, one thing to note just for any but it's going to be making their way out here for local and things like that. They do have a pretty strict bag policy that kicks in at 6 p.m. So if you're here before 6 p.m., it is the looser kind of regular hours bag policy. But after, I'm sorry, after once you hit 6 p.m., it switches over to like the six inch size bag uh, that for a lot of the people that follow along with us are familiar with from Not Scary Farms rules right now. So as long as you've made inside the park um, by six o'clock, you're good with whatever bags you've brought in. It's not like you have to go and like switch out your bag or anything. Yeah. So as we come and stick to the left side over here, it is about the trick or treat side. So they do have a number of spots for trick or treating and it is for ages 12 and under. And they have like, physical uh, little houses and we'll see those that people can knock on and you can actually see coming up right here the orange bag they give away little trick-or-treat bags that the kids are able to use rides are accessible during the event although it is somewhat limited uh, like mass effect is not going right now or at least it wasn't when we walked in that side of the park so it says their most popular rides are available. So whatever that might mean, but you'll get a feel for that also as we do this kind of quick tour. So we'll see what little show moments we can as we go in this tour, but we have been shooting video throughout the day and early evening here to pick up video of some of the shows to put into a big kind of overview video. So you get a little bit of taste for all of them. This is where Incantations was, which was kind of their biggest stage show of the night. It happens at 7.30, or at least tonight it was 7.30. It ran about 15 minutes. Uh, for those familiar with Knott's, it had a little bit of a ghost town a live feel in that all the actors from out the various lands made their way in and were like interacting with guests and dancing and singing and things like that as the main performance was going on. But the main performance was about waking up Patch, the giant jack-o'-lantern up on stage there. He did some singing as well, and it was all the town's folks from the various lands coming together to decide what Halloween was about, tricks or treats. So they kind of sing and dance, fight it out, and then ultimately, like any great story, they all come together and unify and decide it's about all things. Gorgeous gourds. It's just like a decorating, I believe, for like the little pumpkins, yeah little hands-on. There's a lot of little kind of hands-on craft stations throughout the park here where kids can engage. Hometown Square is all decked out in a glowing orange. Tons of great visuals in the daytime and of course at night even better with some lighting and things. Kindness Rocks. Not sure what that one is. But what is it? 
12 to 7, limit one per guest, must be 1,200. Not sure. Do you mind asking what that is? Oh, oh, it looks like they are decorating rocks. Pretty simple, it seems. There we go. Cute. Uh, definitely at the heart of everything we've seen so far in our few hours here has been like being interactive, you know, talking to the actors, singing along, dancing, drawing, coloring, like everything's been about moving and doing something. Not much passive. I mean, obviously for the uh, parents, it's easy to kind of sit back maybe as the kids work on a pumpkin or whatever, but for the most part, it was about trying to get engaged in things. What did you find out about the rocks? Yeah, so Pinus Rocks, you said that it's a rock decorating. So those rocks that you were looking at yeah, on the side. Um, and then you leave them there? Just, yeah, they basically take a rock from the lower level, then they decorate it, and then they put it back down. I'll take them with, so they're going to put them down. Cool. Decorate fun, fun mm -hmm. little decorating thing. Looks like we have another show. There is so much entertainment. Actually, when we got the schedule of shows for up here, I tried to start kind of making a plan a couple days ago. And I kind of just got overwhelmed by it because there was just nonstop activities. And it seemed like every 10 minutes something was starting in the park. And a lot of them are smaller based things like, you know, the activities they're running 12 to 7. But there's just a lot of things to do. So this is like a little pumpkin trail here. Walking through decor. And they take them in little wagons, pulling the little ones around. Lots of displays like this. We're not going to stop off at all of them, but like this one has a ton of different farm animals, has jack-o'-lanterns. So we'll come up here to this land to see all the trick-or-treating, and then we'll bend back and go into the tricks area where everything is much more... Again, I hesitate to say scary because there's nothing really scary per se, but more, let's say, on the eerie side, I think, is the terminology they use most frequently to describe that side. So you have, like, the land of spirit, spirit spire, as well as Ickyville, where everything's kind of focused on the gross kind of slime and bugs and things like that side of the Halloween season. But this is the opposite of it, Sweet Tooth Acres. Everything is sweet and fun and light and totally the opposite of the ickiness. So they've got the fire pits out. We'll just sit out here. It's actually, the weather's amazing up here. It's in the like high 60s which coming from where we've come, where it seems like every night's been in the high 70s, low 80s. It's been a very nice change of pace that we could actually wear like a light sweatshirt and feel comfortable and pretend we're in a cooler season than we have been. There we see Railblazer going off. Agreed, a super pleasant night. All right, so here we are, Sweet Acres. So Trick or Treat Trail. So they have all of these buildings and the kids stand in line and knock on the door. Let's go to a less crowded one. The first one's in our time before, definitely the most crowded. I think we have a bag. The houses. 
So I think all in all, there's about 12 of the houses somewhere in that neighborhood. And they're scattered, so we're just showing a few of them now, and we'll see if we see any of the actors out. When we came through here earlier, there was a few different characters out interacting with people, and they would ask their names. Even with Carmel, the one actor asked her name, and then it was like, oh, Carmel, like the candy, caramel, and would interact, ask where we're from, and things like that. So around this side, the candy corn. So in here, this kind of feels a little not summer nights for the SoCal people there. There's all sorts of games out here, Connect Four and Jenga and stuff like that. And then again, out in the back there are a number of trick-or-treating spots and locations. Hello there to everybody. Sorry if I've missed any comments there as well as I've been trying to navigate the crowds though, but thanks to all that are joining in and I'll try to catch any questions as they come up or hopefully Carmel's logged in now as well to help keep an eye on all that. So we've got some candy themed chairs out. Again, more trickery, but I'm not seeing any of the characters out right now. I don't know if that's because the incantation show just finished, which was like the big moment where everybody was, or the big show, I should say, everybody came to the front and was interacting. So maybe some of the actors are either taking quick breaks or uh, making their way back to the sets. But there were a few, at least three or four actors out here earlier. I'm not seeing them right now, but they were candy themed. And uh, very much kind of sugar plum fairy style. That looks great. Hey there, Manny. Yeah, it's it's definitely, we didn't know what to expect, to be honest. We just knew we were coming up to cover something, and we're hoping it'd be fun. We have been up here for Halloween Haunt a number of times, and, uh, you know, we love Halloween events, and it was sad to see that. It was gone. It's a great zombie cover band on the other side of the park near... Excellent. So we saw, I don't know if it's the same one, the band, it was Snot, they called themselves. And so we got some video of them. They were really fun. We saw the Crypt Yard Disco. That was cool. Um, man, we've seen so many different shows. We've been trying to just gather up like little snippets of video of all these shows. Yeah, that's one. Okay, cool. Hello there. Hello to everybody. Also, I should note, just a lot of the lighting for the rides has been touched up for this season. Uh, also, there's a little, a little bit of light theming. I think we'll see it over in the Ickyville as we make our way that way. And so I think with that, we've seen the treat side of things. We've seen the light side. Now let's head over to the dark side or the eerie side again, as they call it, and make our way to... Well, first will be my favorite spot, I think, is the Spirit Spire, which uh, has a lot of great kind of more traditional haunted theming of lights, lots of ghosts and uh, things like that. And then in Ickyville, I'm hoping we see some of the characters because the characters are absolutely cool over there. Uh, the cover of fame yeah we heard a few different covers and i can't even remember oh the one about it was all about scabs and it was a cover of a Katy perry song if i remember right but yeah they definitely and the kids were all out there dancing it's like yep that's that's definitely the target audience it is not as much you know the teens or the early 
uh, you know, 20 somethings as it would be before for sure. Although we have seen a lot of kids in that age as well, and a lot of we saw a group of um, college students here. I forget the name of the university they were from, but there were like 20 of them all here together and stuff. So it's not that we haven't seen younger people, but it feels like there's more people skewing in the you know parent side of things here, and definitely with a lot of little ones. So I know the loss of Halloween Haunt is a tough one. So try to we've talked a lot about that in terms of covering the event because we would come up here for Halloween haunt and I know um, we'd be devastated if it was like our local haunt and it just like disappeared and became something very different what this is. But that said, what this is, is really cool. It's just, it's unfortunate that lost Halloween haunt as the price for this, but I'm so glad they have a Halloween event here and that's one that's been really good so far, at least one we've seen. All right. What's that? Okay. So this is the great craft off. Looks like they got six minutes on the clock to do some of their own crafty stuff. We saw the um, costume. Oh, I forget what it was called, but basically their kind of version. Cozy in their kitchen. Feels like you're at home, right? Okay. Now we're gonna get this great craft off kicked off in one. Two, the costume one called three. We got. So excited! <laughs> I don't know what's gonna happen. Now this is a colorful stage of competitors. I know. Yeah, the that costume collective or something like that, whatever it was called, was kind of its own take. Do do the costume council was basically a collection of uh, talent that was kind of doing their own version of like pose or drag race or one of those shows where they were like taking the kids and they were like teaching them how to pose and then you know showing off their costumes and it was a fun take much like the the craft off thing there like they're not shows i'm really familiar with they, we don't really watch them but they're obviously super popular reality shows and so it makes sense that they would be there and that they would be something that are quite popular So the main stage here where they do incantation and the costume council, they use that for photo ops in the off time. So it's kind of neat. The kids all get to get up there on stage and take some great photos. Not very often that we see like main stage areas that are accessible to guests in the in-between. So it's funny because it's such a simple idea, but I was thinking about it, like, I don't feel like we ever really see that at Halloween events or most theme park events for that matter. Usually the stage, everybody's kept off the stage for the next show. But here, as soon as the show's over, people are up there. Oh, I think we're gonna go by the Spectral Sisters, I believe they're called. They were quite a bit of fun. We saw them performing earlier in the daylight, but they kind of have some deadpan humor and uh, then their own kind of takes on these songs. Funnel cakes on the right, yes. And sure a popular spot here. What? Don't mind her. She's the silly one. So silly. Shall we do another? But of course. A romantic one? But of course. I should now spread my bloody no sleep.
All right, so as we continue our way through the spires here, lots of tombstones, inspectors, fog, of course. Yeah, agreed. The price is really cheap. Very, very cheap, all things considered. And like for us coming from the Knotts area, we have a platinum pass, so we were, I mean, it was nice that we were invited up here, so we had tickets, but we're also able to use our dining plan and our Knotts cup, so we've been getting free refills and stuff like that. As you might be able to hear, they what they're doing is any of their live performances, at least the ones that we've heard, they are playing the music throughout the entire zone or the entire land, whatever we want to call it. So wherever you're at, you're hearing the music, even if the performer's far off away. You see the ghosts lingering in the back here. Voodoo charm, all kind of voodoo themed merch. They have a number of stores. They don't have a lot of merch for the event. They do have a t-shirt and a sweatshirt. And then they kind of have their own peanuts uh, trick or treat one as well. Peanuts Planet, which is obviously part of the park, little Snoopy themed stuff. Um, is not as much like it's kind of not a specific zone. So although Snoopy's over there and the you know some great pumpkin nods and things like that, the little ride, um, it's not like themed all that much differently. Oh, very cool. Just doing. Okay, so this is Disco Crypt Yard, and so not going on right now, but it's kind of their silent disco. So people check out the headphones off to the left over there. And they come over here. One of the things that was kind of neat when we were here earlier and we were getting some video is there was, I believe, four different dancers that were all themed up in their kind of skeleton costumes. And so they were leading the dance. So you had some professional dancers encouraging people to dance and kind of starting each song off, at least when we were here, with the dance themselves. Oh, very cool. Oh, yes, yes. This one, so I'm not sure if these three are supposed to be lit, but one of the things I liked about this spot was these guys look creepy here, but then looming up over there, and there's several spots like this, is just off in the back, is some sort of ghost kind of just looking down on everyone. Yeah, the weather has been really, really nice. Like. Not at all what we've been experiencing, uh, particularly where Carmel and I live out in the Inland Empire, where it's been like high 90s or 100 degree, and I think that's what it's supposed to be all this next week coming up too. So we're here less than 24 hours. Michael Dega asked if we're visiting a different Halloween house decor this year. We will definitely, yes, Night Day, we'll definitely be doing a bunch of home haunt uh, Halloween decor across the uh, SoCal scene there, 100%, yep. In fact, tonight's the night that some of, at least the ones we normally cover, some of the first ones are opening up tonight. Uh, places like Prism and Midwick Manor and a few others. So we're excited to get to those. Usually for us, the way the season works in terms of coverage, we're, okay, we're making our way into Ickyville real quick. So everything is gonna be icky and gross is kind of the theme, that side of Halloween. Uh, usually the way the season works for us is early to late September is all of like the big places opening, like the Knots and the Horror Nights and all that. And then they slowly transition into the professional haunts uh, taking way. So like your LA Haunted Hay Rides and like we have Shacktoberfest this weekend and Castle Dark and all of that. And then it's all home haunts for that like last three weeks of October. That's kind of the general breakdown, not that it doesn't deviate, but... What do you want?
favorite food item that you Oh, Carmel was pointing out. So American Cafe is just a place I always have liked to eat, but they have the Monster Theater, which we tried earlier. TV dinner with meatloaf, potatoes, and corn served in a TV dinner tray. And it was really good. The meatloaf was quite peppery, spicy. Actually, there's a better picture of it over here. Highly recommend trying this if you're a fan of kind of old school meatloaf. Yeah, it was quite good, actually. And part of the dining plan. Yeah, and part of the dining plan here. So, actually, we were able to eat there for free with our knots. Or I shouldn't say just knots because it's, you know, the Cedar Fair dining plan. But for us, 99% of the time, we only use it at knots. But when we come up here, we can use that dining plan and still be able to eat for free. So, we used that one meal there. Wow, first time to Horror Nights in that long. That's awesome. This was a really good year to go. In my opinion, and I think a lot of people's opinion, it was my favorite year. We've only covered Horror Nights since like 2014, 2013, something like that. So it hasn't been that many years that we've covered it relative to places like Knott's, but it was definitely a favorite for us of all these years. I can't think of anything that compared for me. So a little bit of light theming with some of these rides here, like this one, The Filthy Flies. So they got a little bit of theming there to go with the ickiness. Over here is a, what's it called? Bean Boozle, I believe is the name of the show. And it's just... Yeah. Yeah, so... Oh, they just wrapped up. So what it is, the they compete. The idea is like a parent and the kid. And you spin the wheel and whatever jelly bean, and there's a bunch of gross flavors mixed in, Whatever jelly bean. Oh, here comes some icky characters. Okay. A monster. Slowing left. Overcoming up. Should we go with them or no? I don't know where they're going. They said they're going to a monster sighting, but we've not seen any monsters on that way. So I think we'll continue this way. And hopefully we do some of the monsters, see some of the monsters that we loved over this way. Uh, but so you spin the wheel, you get a flavor, whatever that flavor is, the other person has to eat. So like when I was over there earlier doing video, the kid got like red hot. And so the dad had to eat a red hot jelly bean. And then the dad, when they spun, got popcorn flavored and the kid had to eat popcorn. And whoever finishes their jelly bean first wins. Super simple. Super, super simple. It reminds me again of something like the Knott's Summer Nights when they had a kids, they'd have kids put like a Oreo on their head and try to catch it in their mouth. And like so simple, but really kind of fun. Some of our icky characters. Oh, awesome. We look forward to checking out the photos. I highly recommend that trip. And Portillo's, we love. We're actually spoiled with that one because there aren't that many Portillo's around in general. But we're really lucky because in where we live in the Inland Empire, there is a Portillo's just oddly not that far from us, like 10 miles. But we know a lot of people that come out just for that. Unfortunately, Mass Effect, not part of this evening. I really enjoy Mass Effect. I was sad to see that. Also sad to see the South Bay Cantina not open. They have some good food there. At least we've had some in the past. I mean, our visits here have been like once a year, maybe twice a year. So we're definitely not experts on anything at this park. We just know what we've experienced in our few visits a year there. All right, so Ickyville. We've got lots of the massive skeletons here. This is where earlier was referenced the show. It's the snots. The snots. Mm -hmm. So they are a cover band. And every song they had turned it into a gross version, basically, of itself. No Portillo's in NorCal. Gotcha. This is another one with a little bit of light theming. The Booger Flicker. Some size there. Good ride to make me nauseous, I know. More of the skeleton guys. The slime works is open. It's been a popular spot with the kids. 
can buy slime, work with that. There's a few other um, sweatshirts in here I've not seen yet. <laughs> the dabbing skeleton is great. Okay, so yeah, I've not seen these. Little Monster, Dad Monster, and Mama Monster. Some fun stuff for the family there. And then over there, you can grab some slime. Of course, Squishmallows. Cool. Squishmallows have like taken the world by storm. They were a big deal at Comic Con and they were a big deal at Knott's. And then I saw they won two, and there's not that many uh, categories, but they won two of the uh, toy, whatever international toy awards of 2022. So they are like taking over the universe, not like Funko, but in that vein a little bit. All the skeletons in the games. And then here we reach the bridge that transitions out of Ickyville and to the planet Snoopy area. But as I said, there's not really any much theming over there. So, I mean, there's a few pumpkins and stuff, but we won't go all that way over there just for a couple. It is funny being here and thinking about Haunt and like some of the mazes. Like we're so used to looking over there and seeing what was the old facade for black magic, kind of magician, Houdini-esque type thing. The monsters, or I shouldn't say monsters, the axters, but also monsters uh, that we've seen over here for Ickyville. There's like a game show host. Reminds me a little of Monty Revolta, just in kind of the look. It was really funny and engaging. There is a creature from the Black Lagoon character. <laughs> Looks amazing. There's an orb, like a basically just a... His head is just an eye. Really cool looking. Some fun characters. Cool. More. Yeah, a lot of a lot of different food offer. I mean, actually, it's one of the things we were talking about earlier. Just Carmel and I is just relative to the size of the park from what we're used to. There's a lot of food drink and merchandise options like there's just a lot of stores like it feels like every few hundred feet there's some option for merchandise and definitely on the food side whether it's the funnel cake the churros or anything else there's just a lot of food options which is fun all right so we'll head back to spooky spire we'll see if we find those icky walk around characters this is where we saw them earlier Oh, this is another one of the craft type spots here where they're making their own masks. So, a good one for the little ones to burn some energy there in their writing or creativity if you need that. And we missed it in this tunnel last time because it was kind of chaotic, but we'll take a look at some of the characters over here that are kind of hidden away amongst the slime canisters. Down here we've got, what was it, like a chili pepper as a, a kind of a vampire Dracula character? Yeah, there he is. Kind of hidden away. Could use a little more lighting on these guys. There he is. And then Frankenstein's monster, carrot version. More of these. More squishmallows. Toxic zones. Lots of backdrops for photos. I guess we haven't really talked too much about that, but here's our crew of monster hunters, slime detectors. Picture. 
All right, so I think we are going to go ahead and... Oh, yeah, they, she said the gross-out gauntlet was not an option tonight. They said it's closed, so I'm not really sure what we missed there. And I'm sure there's going to be some other things we're going to miss just because there's a lot of quick, you know, 10, 15-minute shows. Here we go. Bucket Guts, Yak Spit, Minced Whispers, Cockroach Juice. There we go. But definitely, I mean, if we lived up this way, we definitely would be going here quite a bit. It would be one of our Halloween fixes because it's just kind of fun, atmospheric to hang out in, grab some food and relax. Do miss the monsters. Keep like, because so often we'd be here for haunt, I expect like a slider to come flying out or something. And it's just like, yep, that's not what it is right now. But I do think what it is is really fun and a cool idea. I'm glad they embrace things like Spooky Spires and Ickyville, where they do have some of the kind of, I don't want to say again, evil, but we'll say eerie. I keep kind of getting stuck on that word, but uh, some fun stuff there. And I know those are kind of the sides of the town that I know I'm kind of most interested in and Carmel is as well. So it's our kind of stuff. So with that said, we are going to wrap up here. We will have a more comprehensive video going up in the next few days that'll show snippets of most all of the shows, the entertainment, the actor so it gives a bigger feel for what the event is beyond just kind of this quick mini tour here and we'll also podcast on in and talk about all the experiences that we've had here and share all that as well so thank you for tuning in hope you all have a great rest of your night here until next time